Amen and amen, brothers and sisters. It's exciting that today we're going to close, put the, pull the curtains down on this course, Understanding the End Times, with lesson number 20, and by the grace of the Lord. And we're just going to trust him to bring for revelation on what we use to close it out. And we have something interesting for you. Yeshua spoke about it. And in the New Testament, in different ways, is articulated. But let us pray first. Father in heaven, I want to thank you for 20 lessons to bring this cause to a close so that we can start the other related one. Lord, we just pray that your Holy Spirit will brood upon the world and breed life and give us the rema of the world and give us understanding that your name may be honored and glorified. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So here is the uh, epilogue, lesson 20, prophecies concerning the church. We want to close it out because we've talked about gender nations, we've talked about various things, but we also want to close it out with what the Lord said about the church. And there's no better place to start than in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, where Yeshua gave a parable that has not been given much attention. In Matthew 13, he said, another parable is spoken to him them that a certain man planted wheat in his field. And while men slept, the enemy went and planted tares. While men slept, when people were not aware, when people were not watching, when people were not praying, over the course of history, and then in explaining it, when they came to say, Lord, tell us what this means. He said, hey, I, the son of man, I came to plant the good seed in the, in the ground. And then the enemy is the devil, planting his own seed in the same earth. Take note of this. One earth, two kingdoms. The kingdom of Elohim, the kingdom of Satan, both in the spiritual realm and in the physical realm. And so while Yeshua was planting citizens of the kingdom, and Yeshua did not come to found a religion called Christian religion. Contrary to what you learned all your life, he didn't come to be a founder as people count founders, founder of Buddhism, founder of uh, Islam, founder of this religion, that religion. If you classify Yeshua in that context, you reduce him from who he is and what he is, and that's not good enough. He came for something much more important. He came to plant the good seed. He came to proclaim the kingdom. He came to pay the price with his blood. He came that those who believe in him shall be saved and become citizens of the kingdom. Then while men slept, when people were not aware, the enemy came to do a counter planting, to plant tares, look like wheat, look like the good seed in every respect, but materially different, intrinsically different. They are destructive, they choke out the good, and that is what has happened on earth. So, the church you are seeing today, they are, you know what, broadly two types of church, the kingdom church and the other church, the alternative church, the alternate church, the apostate church. But you can also break that one down into the church of Satan, where people have allegiance to Satan directly. And you have also the church of men, where human beings are in church for their belly, and they manipulate people to get money. And then you have the hybrid church, which is a mixture of all, and then the kingdom church of one part. So Yeshua came to plant the good seed, the citizens of the kingdom. And there's only one way you become a citizen of the kingdom, and that is by the new birth experience, which Yeshua explained to John, uh, to Nicodemus in the book of John chapter 3, that somebody has to be born again, born by the Spirit, John 3, 1 to 7. And all the way to nine, regenerated in the inner man. That's the only way. Now, the worldly church, you don't need any regeneration. The church of men, you don't need any regeneration. Church of Satan, you don't need any regeneration. You can just go into a building on certain days, go a few times, go a number of times, be consistent there, you accept it, and then you begin to grow a rank and title and all the ropes and all those things. You can. You can buy your way through. You can. You can. 
literally manipulate your way through. But the church of Yeshua, the people who are part of the church are redeemed by the blood. They are regenerated in their spirit man. There's a change inside and they have given up allegiance to Satan and to the world and their sole allegiance is to Yeshua HaMashiach. And men and brethren, it is so important that we see that Yeshua, the very first uh, instance of Yeshua preaching the gospel was in the book of Matthew 4, after the temptation in the wilderness, we are told in verse 7, 17, then came Yeshua, then from that time Yeshua began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, Matthew 4, 17, then he began to walk. They saw Peter and his brother Andrew come, follow me, and make you fishers of men. They left their fishing business to follow him. He saw John and James, by the fishing business of their father Zebede, come, and they left them all and followed him. The gospel of the kingdom requires primary, primal allegiance to Yeshua as Lord and King. Not just as a savior who will take you to heaven when you die, but as a king who will rule your life here on earth. And men and brethren, then he began to proclaim the gospel, signs and wonders following him, and crowd gathered. And what did he do? He began to teach them. We must be careful not to draw attention of people to ourselves. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is not given to promote any man, to promote any cause, to promote any denomination. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is given to exalt Yeshua, to point people to him, is given for expanding the kingdom, and there is a corruption when you want the anointing for yourself. It's just like today. We are talking about Father's Day, Father's Day, Father's Day. If you want to gather a crowd of people called your daddy, father, popsy, can I suggest to you, you on the wrong track because he assured himself he said call no man father and he said we have a duty to point people to the father the ultimate father so it's not a matter i mean by culture you can call people daddy father all that but in practice the question is your ministry is it one that draws attention to you as a solution provider or are you a signpost that point people to the ultimate father the elohim of heaven yahweh the holy one of israel do you point people to him do you empower them to know him independently to know him enough to be able to have faith in him and cash the check of their faith or do you want them to be subject to you and be hidden in you and be you know just just not knowing their left or their right brothers and sisters for this reason the Lord bypassed Peter and the other apostles and chose an enemy of the gospel, Paul the apostle. You see the mention of him in Acts chapter 8, where he was one of those who was an accessory to the murder of Stephen. He chose him, a former enemy of the gospel, the one who had deep understanding of the Holy Scriptures, the Old Testament, that the Yeshua knew that the moment this person is enlightened in the truth and comes to understand the new covenant, he's going to be faithful as a master builder and Paul was able to write in 1st Corinthians 3 from verse 10 you know he says according to the grace of Elohim which is given unto me as a wise master builder I've laid the foundation of what the church ought to be the acts of the apostle he laid the foundation the Pauline epistles and he said another builder thereupon but let everyone take heed how he builds thereupon then he gave an interesting exposition that Elohim will not force people that people are going to either build by his master plan or build what Satan wants them to build he said take heed how you build let everyone take heed for other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid which is Yeshua then he said in verse 12 of 1st Corinthians 13 First uh, Corinthians chapter 3. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, or wood, hay, stubble, two types of substances, gold, silver, precious stones are expensive in fire, they are not destroyed, they are refined, the beauty of them comes out, wood, hay, stubble are combustible. He said, let everybody take heed how he builds. Take heed because there's something important. He said in verse 13, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it. The day will declare what type of church are you building. The day will declare because it shall be revealed by fire. The fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. 
If any man's work abide, which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yes, so as by fire. So somebody can be born again, spirit-filled. Somebody can be wonderful, you know, holy, in quotes. But the church system you are building is not the divine pattern. It's the worldly pattern. It's the religious pattern. Listen, at the last day, you may squeeze into the kingdom, but your works will born. No reward. Another person may not have all the anointing, but is faithful to the master plan, building according to the master plan on the last day for just being faithful and building accordingly. You know what? On the last day when his work is tried, the fire will not burn it. Brother, he will receive the crown of glory, the crown of righteousness, the type that Paul said I'm looking forward to. And Paul again made analogy to the two types of things people are going to do. This is prophecy, not just, you see, we tend to forget that Paul was a major prophet in the New Testament. Paul was, Peter was, not just apostle, he was a prophet, he was declaring the Lord called him to use him to give a master plan. So in 2 Timothy chapter 2, Paul said in verse 19, nevertheless, the foundation of Elohim standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that named the name of Yeshua depart from iniquity. Then he says something interesting in verse 20. But in a great house, they are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, some to honor, some to dishonor. The same concept. If any man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. He gave that knowledge again. People are going to do uh, nothing, is, nothing startles heaven. The men and women whose lives are okay, they are good men, they are good women. They love the Lord, but their problem is that they are walking in disobedience. They are growing a religious church, gathering a crowd to themselves, the crowd of milk drinking babes who are never perfected because they need soap or prophecy from the man of God. They need soap. They never get to know him enough to be able to stand. And they need all the point of contact, all the CDs and videos to just make them to believe. They can't believe the Lord independently. Brothers and sisters, what are you building with? What substance do you know that there'll be a day where what we're doing shall come before the Lord and the fire of the Lord will try them? It was Paul that also said in Philippians chapter 3, 17, Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as you have us for an example for many walk, of whom I have told you often, many Paul said, Paul made a prophetic statement at the early part of the church. Many walk, of whom I have told you, even weeping, that they, ministers of the gospel, are enemies of the cross of Yeshua. They made the cross of no effect. Verse 19, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame. They are glorying in the, 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 the cost of the car they are riding, the part of the, the type of house they are living in. They are glorying in the sanctuary, the beauty, the color, the expensive nature of the gold, decoration of the temple, the wrong things they are glorying. He says, for many, I tell you even weeping, they are enemies of the cross whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who made earthly things. For a conversation, Paul said, for him and for those who believe like him, for a conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for our, the Savior, our Lord Yeshua, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things to himself, men and brethren. That's why the Lord gave Paul the insight to write a, a, a description, the master plan of the church in granular detail. So today, when you see people 
who know all scripture, but they don't know the Pauline epistles, they've never asked the Lord, please, this man you made the master builder of the church, open my eye to see what you gave to him. And they carry on as if it doesn't matter. They carry on, they do their stuff. They carry on, they do what they want. What are, where is the fivefold? No, it's not in what they are doing. Where is spiritual gift-based ministry? No, it's not where they are doing. Oh, what they are doing is they are building organization. They think it will clap for them because they gather 10 million people, 1 million people, 3 million people, 3 million people who are not disciples of Yeshua HaMashiach, who are personal, you know, selves and personal acolytes of the, of the founder of the church. It's not the same as disciples of Yeshua. We're not asked to go and get a crowd. He said, go and make disciples of all nations. I mean, that's our mandate. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. That's our mandate. Take the word. Go and make disciples of men. So if a ministry is not making disciples of Yeshua, gathering crowd or milk drinking babes to itself, it's out of the way. And that's why, men and brethren, the church is described as an outcome of the grace of Elohim at working people. The grace whereby we didn't choose him. You didn't become a believer because you, you struggled, you believed, you did this, you avoided that, and then after doing that, God accepted you. No! Ephesians 2 tells us a glorious picture that we're dead in sins and trespasses outside of the commonwealth and Elohim in his mercy. Grace met us. Grace woke us up from the sleep of storm, the sleep and stupor of sin. Grace woke us up, activated our conscience, and grace made us to receive a glorious thing. Salvation by grace through faith. And in Paul, again in writing in Romans chapter 10 from verse 6 began to describe that it's not something we do, it's something we believe. We receive by faith what the Lord has already done on the cross of Calvary. And if we are convicted in our heart and believe in our heart, confess with our tongue, we draw it down. The same principle Yeshua spoke in John 3 from verse 1 to 7. The same principle in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17. Therefore, if any man is in Yeshua, is a new creature, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And the Lord wants us to take these things into consideration. That there is a true church Yeshua is building in the earth realm. There is also a false church Satan is building. He's either building it directly for himself or using human beings, giving them ambition to do things in their own name. And we must be careful to make sure. And if you want to know about the true church, you need to study like, you know, the description of the true church in Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 11 to the end as the habitation of Elohim by his spirit with room for both Jews and Gentiles. He made both one and it becomes the church can be described as a habitation of Elohim by the spirit. Then also, you also need to know that in Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 1 to 6, he also made that allusion of the church being one. It didn't matter whether it was Jew or Gentile. By one spirit, one father, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And the same principle in Colossians chapter 3, from verse 1 to verse 12, the same principle. And that's why also the church is also described as a body and bride of Yeshua. Ephesians chapter 5, 22, all the way to 33, but the wife as well as the bride. I mean, as, as well as the body, the body and the bride. He is the head, we are the body. He is the husband, the church is his wife. The bride, the, the blood he shed at the cross of Calvary was a bride price he paid with which he secured the war or the church unto himself. It was the dowry he paid. It was city say, this is my blood, it was shed. And those who believe, they become mine. That's Ephesians chapter 5, 22 to 33. And then we are told that the role of spiritual gifts, because the church is supposed to function as a living, loving organism, where every saint discovers which part of the body you are by the gift that is inputted into you, 
right from the time when we're sealed into Yeshua, men and brethren. So the church is not an organization you rise up by politics and politicking or maneuverings. No, your gift will make a way for you. The gift shows what the Lord wants to do with you. And if you know, if you want to know about how this plays out, Romans 12, 4 to 7 talks about this concept. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 12 talks about the same concept of the body. The body, a body, different parts. One body, one body, one George Akalon. Hair is there, eyes are there, you know, ears are there, tongue is there, mouth is there, fingers are there, hands are there, belly is there. One body, many members. And you are a member of the body. And it's not about the organization you go to on Sunday. It's about Yeshua, whose body you are part of. And we ought to know, as he said in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 to 6, unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Yeshua. Unto every one of us, Ephesians 4, 7, you know, all the way to 10. Every one of us is gifted. First Corinthians chapter 12, Verse 4 to 7 makes that point. And then, as we said before, Romans 4, 12 makes that point. The same principle, First Peter chapter 4, verse 10 and 11, therefore says, As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of Elohim. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of Elohim. If any man minister, let him minister as of the ability which Elohim gives, that Elohim in all things may be glorified through Yeshua HaMashiach, to whom be praise and honor and glory and dominion forever. Amen. And brothers and sisters, this is a context in which Peter talks about the royal priesthood, the Melchizedek priesthood. Today, the predominant thing across the world is the priesthood of Nimrod, where somebody wants to be a big boss, unapproachable, unattainable, out there, and people just come to bow to, to kiss the ring and all that. Other people want to be priest after the order of Levi, wear robes, you know, pink and color and, you know, whatever robes and, you know, purple and all that, and wear cap and sit on thrones, and people come and call, my Lord, my grace, all that. People love that. These are gone. Yeshua has taken them out of the way. The only priesthood Yeshua left on earth is the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek where everybody knows his gift and calling. And you take your place within the context of the body and we all grow together in ye to Yeshua and into each other. And that same principle that he describes in the Bible is what the fivefold are supposed to bring about. And that's why Satan doesn't want the fivefold. Religion doesn't want the fivefold. Yet it is only the fivefold that can bring about the true kingdom church that the Holy Spirit will use because there's grace in the fivefold. And he said in Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. For what purpose? For the perfection of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Yeshua. Till we all come into the unity of the faith, unto the knowledge of the Son of Elohim, unto a perfect man, unto the stature of the fullness of Yeshua. And the whole idea is to come to the place where, in verse 15, by speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, that is Yeshua, and then from whom, from that head, the whole body joined together, fitted together, and compacted by what every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make it increase of the body unto the define of itself in love. That's what the Lord wants. A situation where everything flows in the church, a living, loving organism. Everybody has use. Everybody is useful. Nobody is a dead weight. Nobody is a statistics. Everybody is being used by Holy Spirit to minister to the Father and to each other. That's the body. And as a bride, pure, holy, you know, betrothed to Him, not to government, not to politicians, but betrothed to Him, loyal to Him, faithful to Him, even unto death. 
men and brethren. That's why John spoke about the way the body is as holy bride unto the Father, unto Yeshua, and as a body that is pure in First John chapter 3 and in other scriptures. And the Lord also told us that there is an apostate church system, not only planted by Satan as theirs, but also from Matthew chapter 7 from verse 13, it says, Enter into ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in their heart. A lot of people today are going into the broad way. They are doing broad way Christianity, where it's all okay. Everything in the world is okay. Just do it. We're just the religious equivalent of the world. And the Lord is not impressed that people can say, take the scriptures and toss them aside and do whatever they want to do. Broadway Christianity is meaningless. It has no value. Broadway Christianity will end up in mystery Babylon. Broadway Christianity is destined for the fires of eternal damnation. And the Lord said, come out of it. Get into the narrow gate. Get into the narrow gate and walk on the narrow way. Get into the straight gate and walk on the narrow way. And the Lord has grace to release through which we can literally live the way he wants. First John 2, 18, down to the end, tells us about the apostate system. The Antichrist is engineering it. He's yet to appear, but there's a system, even from the time when John was on earth, within the first 70 years, the Antichrist system was already forming. We're not surprised today. First John chapter 4, also spoke about that. Second John chapter 1 also spoke about that, the same principle. And Jude says from verse 3, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. There is a faith that was delivered to the saints and there is a fake faith that the enemy wants to bring about. And brothers and sisters, the Lord is asking us to know that, listen, true believers are overcomers. When First John chapter 4, 4 and 5 is talking there, you have Elohim, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The same concept in First John chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. And so the Lord wants us to know that he is interested that the church that began the journey over 2,000 years ago shall not end in the plan of Satan, shall not end with the playbook of Satan. That's why the Lord, in every generation, he raises the teaching ministry and he broods upon the word, makes the word come alive, the realm of the word comes out, he raises teachers across the world and uses them for one purpose, and that purpose is to purify his church. That purpose is to enable people not to believe that whatever you do is okay. As long as you go to church on a Sunday, it is not okay. Not every church is the church of Yeshua. And not every garden is the garden unto Yeshua. Men and brethren, the key word the Lord wants to fulfill in our time is in Ephesians chapter 5. He said in verse 25, Husbands, love your wives, even as Yeshua also loved his church and gave himself for it. And because he gave himself for it, poured out his blood so that those who believe through the blood, they come into the kingdom. He's doing the second thing, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Take note, the word, the ministry of the word is what the Lord has ordained to use to purify the church, to sanctify the church, to take away spots and wrinkles. Look at what is, how he said it there. Verse 27, that he might present it to himself at the day of the trumpet, both for the first resurrection and the rapture, up to in preparation for the judgment seat of Yeshua and the marriage supper of the Lamb, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but it shall be holy and without blemish. In other words, the Lord deliberately is doing a work 
of releasing the power of the world so that people cannot say I didn't know. People cannot claim ignorance. Just like, you know, in the war, people plead the Fifth Amendment. So also in the kingdom, a lot of people say, I don't know, I didn't know, I didn't know. But Hosea 4, 6 says, my people have perished for lack of knowledge. The knowledge you don't know is not going to exonerate you. The Holy Scriptures is there. What are you doing with your time? Are you just looking for things that will minister to your flesh? You know, words that minister to your flesh? Or are you looking for what will nourish your soul? The Lord says, the Lord, minister of the world has been sent forth to deliver us from all the religious colorations, all the things that we are doing that is not profitable, so that we can be the church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Spot stands for sin. Wrinkle stands for traditions of men. Other such thing stands for, you know, spirit of division and divisiveness. The Lord wants to take them away and enable us to be pure and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. This is what the Lord is doing now. Are you part of it? Are you receiving the ministry of the word as breathed by Holy Spirit with potent power to wash away all the filth we, we took along with us when we embraced religion in those days? Or are you open? Are you called to the fivefold? You prefer to carry a title that will make you look important and the work of the Lord, the Lord wants you to get about, you are not doing it. The ministry of the word is available to empower. And that's what I want to encourage you to, you know, enroll for the Global School of Ministry and enroll for the master class or the YES course and their websites are displayed that you may be able to come to a place where you get to know why you were created, get to know why you were redeemed, get to know the very assignment the Lord wants you to pursue on earth so that you are not pursuing the wrong thing and also know the enormous resources the Lord has made available for you to draw down by faith as allocations for the assignment. And these things are all integrated. Brothers and sisters, the Lord wants us to prepare for what? He wants to do. I mean, embrace what he's doing in the now to prepare the church for the day of days when the trumpet will sound. Men and brethren, those who are not embracing the process now will discover that it will be too late. That's what happened to the foolish virgins. They were all virgins. They had not been defiled. They were all virgins. But five were careless. Five were not watching. Five were not waiting. Five were not praying. The other five made sure they were oil in their horn. And so they were practicing all the Lord wanted them to practice. And by the grace of the Lord, they were in a place where they were awake, they were alive, they were alert, and they were praying. And therefore, the coming of the Lord did not come as a surprise to them. And the Lord is saying that we too can be like that. I don't know who is there right now. Can you just stretch your hand before I call, before I give the assignment? Can you just stretch forth your hand right now and say, Lord, deliver me from every distraction. Deliver me from the spirit of the world. Deliver me from every ignorance. And Lord, open my eyes to see and I embrace the truth of your word. Let it wash me clean. Let it purify me. Even so, Lord, let it be according to the faith of your people in Yeshua's name. Amen. Now, by way of assignment, please, number one, summarize what you learned from this lesson concerning the true church. Number two, please summarize what you learned from this lesson concerning the false church system and then three is not immediate these two are immediate the three is right at this of at least 500 words three to 300 to 500 words which reflect your understanding of the revelation shared in the 20 lessons that make up this course on understanding the end times the director of studies will direct you where you can post the essay and on the first page you know what you normally do write the, the name of the program you are doing whether it's a master class or yes course or school of ministry then your full name in the middle your location the city where you are nation and the date of submission so you can submit this assignment on the last day before the holidays that are coming the major holidays so you have some time you have you have a few a, a couple of weeks or i mean about three weeks or so to write this and submit it is part of it. The director of studies will tell you about the cost impact assessment. And listen to this. By the grace of the Lord, tomorrow we start 
a short course titled the things to come it was part of this course but the lord showed us the need to excise it so we are talking about all the things leading to the rapture in this side then from that one we talk about the rapture the great tribulation the rise of the antichrist and false prophet and the things that will happen and by the grace of the lord this series in the systematic advanced kingdom eschatology studies they give you a proper grounding and understanding of the things you need to know. Father in heaven, bless your saints who have been part of this course. Let it be truly profitable, something definite they will receive and they will not forget. And let it transform their understanding. Let it renew their mind. We give you praise. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen.